שרוצה לבוא ולשאול, מגוון רחב של ארכיטקטים, למעלה מ-25 ארכיטקטים של הענן, של אג'ור, שיושבים פה כל יום, כל אחד ב-workload שונה, אז אם יש לכם שאלות על ביג דאטה, על AI, על, על IoT, על mixed reality, על כל דבר, אתם צריכים ארכיטקט של מייקרוסופט שיבוא ויעזור לכם, אז אתם יכולים פשוט לקבוע פגישה חינם, לא עושים את זה שתבואו ולשאול אותו, וממש מישהו שיכול לעשות את זה במקור בריז. אז תנצלו את זה, באמת, כאילו, כמה שיותר שוב. וזהו, אז תהנו, תודה רבה. עוד משהו אחד, מיכל שגם עוברת כאן לראות, ביקשה, אחד ה... יש להם שם הטפסים שקצת על המקום, אם אתם יכולים בבקשה למלא. אני חושב שזה מאוד מאוד נחמד לאור האירוח היפה שהם נתנו לנו. אין להם סוויצ'ים דק טו אינגליש. So, uh, first thanks was to Microsoft, and the second is to the VR and AR Association, uh, which just opened their uh, uh, Israeli branch, and some of the speakers from the companies uh, uh, here are actually associated with them, and uh, thank you, uh, guys. And uh, they asked me to tell you a little bit about them. So the VR and AR Association is uh, a non-profit organization that actually is Uh, just uh, uh, gather together all the, the startups, companies, uh, service providers that have to do with VR and AR, uh, they are worldwide. And uh, if you're doing something in this space, I think it's worth a while to check uh, to be a member of that. And they really want to grow in Israel. Uh, yeah, as you can see, they have lots of companies, lots of opportunities for uh, companies. And, and some of the Israeli chapter companies, some of them are here today, also Ben is a crazy land, and, uh, and Snappy Gal is also here. So basically if you have questions, they are better suited to answer them than me. And some other companies that uh, are not here today, but maybe will be in one of our next meetups. Okay. And if you want to check out their events, we have also a Facebook page, you can check it out. So thank you guys uh, for letting to organize that. And uh, this is a section usually I do much longer, but this time I will do it only for two seconds, just uh, to talk about the biggest things that happened that are relevant to the Israeli community. Uh, there are a lot more to learn about if you want to, uh, but there are so many speakers, so I will not talk a lot. Uh, just a few things that happened. Uh, first of all, Amazon released Sumerian, which is a, is a platform to build and deploy VR and AR scenes to a web uh, uh, application. Uh, I think it's really uh, quite revolutionary and, and it will be very interesting to see where it goes from there. Uh, Lomus had a deal signed with Quanta, which is an Apple supplier for people that are waiting for the Apple glasses. Uh, that's a big sign. Um, Another thing that I, I would like to uh, show you is that uh, uh, I think one of the best meetups that are worldwide is actually taking, part, uh, taking place in San Francisco. It's called the Alba Meetup. And I really recommend you to go to their page. They had a big event last night and they talked about really interesting stuff. Uh, you can learn a lot about where augmented reality is going and where the money is uh, right now, as you can understand. And one last thing is Niantic, uh, the guys from Pokemon Go announced Harry Potter, which is a clever move on their part. I think it's, it's going to be something that you hear about more when they publish it. And that's all for uh, from uh, me today. And on that, ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, So today, community should, <coughs> the community shout-out is basically the section where uh, things that are for the community, uh, the place where uh, they can uh, get uh, their stage, and usually it's a job offers, it's projects that are interesting to the community, and in this case we have uh, uh, Krell from uh, the Israeli Export uh, uh, Institute. Uh, we have a really cool offer for startups for 2018. I think it will be cool to hear about it more. Do you want to hear some slides? Do you wanna yeah, I have some slides I can share. Okay, so come on in. So as I said, we have uh, many switches to use to do. So in the middle, I'll just 
just uh, I'll talk about the agenda for the rest of the meeting. Um, the next speaker will be Andre uh, for Microsoft. He will speak about augmented reality and cancer research. And, uh, I think it's a really cool subject. He uh, will give you some tips, some code, uh, great stuff. After that, we'll have a few speakers, each one from his own company that he has founded, and, and the lessons they learned, the vision they have, and some demos also. Uh, so it's going to be quite uh, intense. And uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Claire. Um, I'm managing the uh, mobile sector at the Israeli Export Institute. Um, I came here tonight to share a little bit about our plans for uh, 2018. Um, um, and talk a little bit about the Export Institute, uh, particularly at the uh, mobile sector. Um, so I learned in the past few weeks that uh, those two words, uh, Export and Institute, uh, can sometimes be confusing. Uh, yet, if you uh, take a closer look, uh, you'll find great value, as i show you in a minute. So, um, the Export Institute is a non-profit organization uh, owned by the government and the private sector at equal shares. Um, and basically, its main goal is to provide uh, business value for Israeli companies. Um, Business value, uh, our services, uh, we, have so, we have a few services um, I'm going to elaborate tonight due to the uh, time limit. Um, and I want to focus on our main uh, service, uh, which is uh, uh, our core value, and it's the uh, qualified meetings we are having uh, uh, during the year. Uh, qualified meetings can take place in, in a few uh, ways. One of them is a showcase uh, overseas. Um, another one is a delegation, an incoming delegation, an outgoing delegation. Uh, some uh, it can be a roadshow, and also uh, local uh, events such as uh, conferences. Uh, we had a few weeks ago a joint event with uh, Kalkalist and, and Paul Inbank, uh, where we conducted more than 300 B two B meetings from. Uh, companies from all over the world. Um, I'd like to share our plans for two, 2018. Um, as you can see, um, there's a few showcases uh, such as MWC uh, Barcelona, which is the uh, largest mobile uh, event in the world. Um, Last year, we uh, conducted more than uh, 3,000 meetings, B2B meetings, um, across four days. Just imagine how many leads you can uh, receive from that kind of uh, event. Um, this year, we're planning to uh, also attend MWC uh, in, in Americas, uh, Asia, which is uh, uh, the largest uh, uh, showcase in Southeast um, Asia um, and Africa Com, which we uh, just came back from a uh, very successful event many leads uh, many good feedbacks from uh, our companies uh, we're also planning a roadshow to ch China and Taiwan uh, last year we uh, met with HTC um, uh, focusing uh, uh, mainly on uh, handset manufacturers, um, as you can, as you can see, also a few delegations to India and Japan, focusing on AR, VR, AI, IoT, especially uh, smart homes, and also exploring uh, the uh, Russian market. I'm not sure yet uh, if it's going to be a showcase or roadshow. Something is going to to happen in 2018. Just to show you a glimpse of uh, our uh, companies uh, that we work with, as you can see, very uh, large uh, players in the, in the market, HTC, 
ZTE, Huawei, <coughs> Xiaomi, Amazon, Samsung, um, leading players in, in the market. Um, this year we decided to uh, give free membership, no fee, uh, free of charge. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity for you guys to explore our services, um, join us and enjoy it. Um, I, I said I'm going to keep it short, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, these are my details. I'm going to leave some business card here. Uh, you can. Uh, email me, call me, feel free to do it anytime. And I think we have time for a few questions. Yeah. <coughs> what is it that you're looking for? What do you need? What do I need? Yeah. What do you need? I don't need anything, I'm okay. What do you need? I don't need anything. I just I'm here to help you getting what you want. Um, most of our, uh, our partners are uh, handset manufacturers, mobile carriers, um, integrators, um, um, distributors, uh, things of that nature. Uh, so I'm here to help you. Uh, if anyone has another. Yes. How do, how do we what? Sorry? So a startup and has example, example. Example. Okay, well, I, uh, um, as I said, our core value is providing uh, B2B meetings during those uh, events that I, uh, I talked about, which uh, you can see some examples uh, uh, here. Um, when we go to uh, showcase for example, we have 65 companies, Israeli companies, uh, that the uh, list is close to MWC Barcelona. Uh, we pre-schedule meetings with those kind of players. Um, it could be on spot meetings. Um, and the greatest value uh, we provide are the B2B meetings. We uh, can reach almost any player out there, and this is our uh, core value. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Prayat. Yeah. Thank you. Also, uh, just to let you know that he is uh, also an entrepreneur in my himself. So he comes from the same world, and I think that for B two B companies, that, uh, it has a great value to have all these uh, leads to companies that are really out to reach otherwise. And uh, for 2018, it's for free. So. Okay, um, let's move on. Um, so, uh, before we introduce our speakers, just think about that as a agenda. So, uh, this awkward moment where we wait for the projector will happen sometime. <laughs> Um, so, uh, my name is Andrea, I'm your co-organizer, and I'm also a partner with Revenue Capital. At Revenue Capital, we help companies find business opportunities and partnerships worldwide. Um, I would also like to thank Vara and Microsoft, especially for the beer and pizza. I only wish that we could share it with our live streaming audience, but we love them and we thank them for being here with us. And we thank you very much for coming out, especially during the rain. We know how much Tel Avivis love the rain, so thank you very much again. Um, so to introduce our speakers tonight, we know in VR and AR that we have to really plan out great experiences. And part of that entails context, point of view, and also timing. And so here we have an example of all of that going very, very wrong. Colbert, it is Monday. It's Monday, which as we all know, can be a rough day for a lot of people. But if you think you had a bad day, at least it wasn't as bad as the Weather Channel's cameraman, who was assigned to cover the demolition of the Georgia Dome. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> I gotta tell you, this is gonna ruin the Weather Channel's reputation as the premier place to watch buildings explode. <laughs> okay, and speaking of explosions, uh, we have some amazing speakers that are really exploding and shaking up their industries. From communications, to advertising and video, to construction, and yes, cancer treatment. All pretty amazing things. So, if you could please help me warmly welcome them. We have Andre from Microsoft. We have Doll from Snappy. We have Ben from Anzu. And we have Haim from Pixio. Without further ado, Oh, oh, sorry. And excuse me, we have also a very special speaker, Matan from Astrolink. Thank you very much for the introduction. So, hi everyone, my name is Andre Angelov. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. We are part of a team called CSE. Basically, the main idea of this team is that we engage with startups, we engage with innovation labs around the world, and we try and push innovation, and we look at areas that those teams and those specific uh, companies don't have that expertise in-house. So we look at machine learning, we look at mixed reality, we look at every type of technology you can think of, and we go in there, we engage, we work side by side, and we help the business. So today I'm going to be talking about a very specific one with Well Cornell Medicine in New York. Um, so this is uh, an institute that their main specialization is to uh, for, it's for cancer treatments. So this specific department that we work with, they are using next generation genomic, uh, genomics and uh, computational biology to see how they can treat patients in a very different way. So everyone that has cancer, they, they saw that your DNA actually mutates. So that is kind of the core problem that, you know, you're trying to fix lung cancer, but if your DNA is broken, you will keep having it. It's very, very hard to cure it. So what they do with this, they have a machine learning pipeline, which basically analyzes the DNA of many, many patients. So they compare for a patient that has cancer and a patient that has healthy tissues and healthy DNA, they look and see, well, the, where do the alterations happen? And then they look at that specific area, but then when they extract that, that looks like a graph. So it just looks like, you know, lots of molecules talking to each other, the DNA interacting. And then they need to look at other drugs that they can possibly use to attack that. So in one of their samples, there were a, there were a patient that had pancreatic cancer. But because of this, they went through it and they saw the DNA was very similar to lung cancer which is, you, you know, you have drugs that are much more powerful, much more efficient for that. So they treated him with lung cancer, and he survived. So this is something that a doctor would just never do. Like, why, why would you give him different drugs, right? So this is something that really, really goes to the bottom of the problem, and they try to, to analyze it. Now, the issue is when the machine learning finishes, and it, it gives you, like, that specific problem, then you need to look through loads and loads of drugs and see, okay, which one does it actually work? And that's when they bring this brainstorming process. Loads of physicians, biological engineers, they all come together and they try and figure out, you know, what can we do here? And that usually takes at least 36 hours and it's a process that's very intensive. And you can imagine, this is what they look at. When they project these things, this is how they look like. And they try and understand, like, you know, how these molecules work, how can we interact with them, how can we attack them? Um, so it's very, very difficult. So we engage with them because they wanted to bring all of this in mixed reality. So they wanted those graphs to appear like this. They wanted to see them in front of them. They wanted to have sharing scenarios where multiple people, even doctors, look at it and they can see it from different angles. And you have other people that manipulate the nodes and move them around. And then that way you see a much better picture in 3D about how this thing works. So they initially, they, they were the ones that came to us and said, we want Holands. We want to use Holands. We've already actually developed an application. Uh, they had something called Holograph, 
Um, and when they came to us, since it was in a very early stage, uh, we had to work a lot with them to kind of bring it to the, you know, to the production level. We've done a lot with them. Uh, you can kind of load all of these graphs in OneDrive. You can do all kinds of things. Um, and we added a sharing scenario. We added loads of physics. This app is actually published on the store. So if you have anyone that has a whole uh, whole lens, you can go to this link right here. I will be able to share the slides that run to make it easier for people. Um, you can download the app and you can try it yourself. You'll be able to see the graph in front of you. You can manipulate it, and you can even load your own graphs if you have something like that. Um, but today I'm going to focus a lot on the Voronoi selection. So one of the issues that we have in mixed reality and kind of in any augmented reality is when you have graphs like that, how do you select nodes? If you look at it for a, from a, like a, a specific angle, like how can you tap and select the specific nodes if you manipulate it? It's actually quite difficult um, to do that. So let me just show you quickly how these graphs look like.
Okay, so a change of time level in the agenda. Andre just has to leave uh, during the, uh, the meetup. So what we'll do now is uh, that Ben Komanzu will present, and then Andre, and then we'll come back to God. Yes, the longest uh, presentation and it's a lot to show us. So I think it's really worth it. So this will be your chance to grab more beer. I don't know if you took it. Uh, it's not maybe a like two minutes. Uh, how we explore, how uh, we extend our reality in different ways, even 
and, and the way we just heard from Microsoft, for example, is a great example of a new way to extend our reality. Um, also, uh, we can see that uh, AR has a much bigger target market, and we're going to see it uh, getting bigger and bigger, and we'll eventually uh, uh, outperform VR, uh, especially because how accessible it is uh, uh, in terms of the devices it can run on. Uh, another thing that we see is a lot of brands, uh, again, we are an advertising company and works a lot with brands, uh, and we see uh, all kind of very interesting POCs in the ways uh, um, brands use uh, um, AR as a gateway uh, uh, for greater uh, product information, how to extend the reality, how to uh, um, sell better, how to inform clients better, and how to attract them in new, different ways. Uh, you can also see a lot, a lot of uh, uh, market leaders uh, uh, like Mark Zuckerberg and many others that identify this thing, if it's Apple, if it's Facebook, you see them investing a lot in AR uh, because they understand that uh, it could be accessible even through today's devices uh, and this is a major thing uh, in terms of distribution, how uh, the market will go. Uh, also, uh, because we work with a lot of publishers and app developers that use our technology for advertising, we see a big shift. We see a lot of people are being more interested either in adding AR to the application or developing uh, additional AR apps and, uh, and hiring teams to build uh, AR specific uh, features in, in this very exciting time. Um, now, this is a, a very important topic, at least for me. Um, <coughs> people like ad experiences. You, you like, you don't like normal ads, you go to a website, you won't like the banner, but when someone uh, uh, put an immersive experience around you, it makes sense. Uh, for example, I will show you a POC that we did, um, we had a company that had a, a, a virtual cinema up a vir in, in virtual reality, in mobile virtual reality, it's something that turns your phone, essentially, to a cinema. Uh, and we connected them with a brand like uh, Sony Motion Pictures to provide trailers before uh, you see your content. So you actually feel like you are in a cinema. And this is the kind of ad experiences that will actually uh, uh, not only not disturb you, they will make your experience more realistic in these kind of uh, immersive experiences. Uh, the first example I will show you, now it's movie time. <laughs> so. First example I will share with you about emotional connection. You can see this company of Mill and what it did with their Arla is launching the most ambitious augmented reality campaign ever by a major brand. The campaign utilizes narrative elements and character that changes and grows with time. The presence of Arla milk cartons on breakfast tables is the ideal platform for a story that unfolds day by day and enables consumers to forge an emotional connection with the virtual kitty. So, as you can see, it's very clear how they create emotional engagement, and there are many other examples. Another uh, example uh, that is very common is enhancing existing advertising. Uh, maybe it's a flyer, maybe it's a billboard, it could be different type of static objects that uh, uh, by the use of AR becomes alive. Uh, let's see this example of a jeans company and their AR campaign. <laughs> very simple example, it was very easy to make, and, and the effect is uh, taking something that is static and making it more interactive. <coughs> Just one 
it where it starts. Uh, this is another very hot topic in AR, which is the virtual trials. Uh, we see a lot, a lot, a lot of brands are trying it in many different ways, especially cosmetic companies uh, are doing amazing things uh, uh, with uh, this technology. And here we see an example of Lacoste and their uh, 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 virtual try-on uh, application. Another example that we see a lot is uh, hyperlocation advertising. This means that they combine the properties of AR and location-based advertising, uh, and you can add all kind of things on top of the reality while someone navigates or uh, uh, does uh, uh, all kind of use cases with AR that you normally do outside, and you add uh, location-based advertising on top of that. Uh, we expect to see a lot, a lot uh, uh, more of this kind of advertising uh, uh, because we see a lot of developers are really exploring this from all kind of angles and uh, uh, we think it could bring a whole new age of advertising uh, uh, because uh, just think about it, you can walk in the street, navigate and then McDonald's can say, hey, you are near uh, Burger King and you are about to enter it so maybe I'll just offer you uh, in real time a coupon go 500 meters to our Burger King branch and give you 50% off. Or many, many different examples. Um, the, actually, the thing I will show you next is something uh, uh, relatively similar. This is uh, uh, our Anzu AR concept. Uh, just something that, uh, again, we are not an AR company, but we provide tools for our companies and we want to show a, a concept of how we uh, envision uh, a real use case that can actually happen in the real world for AR at the time. So I'm walking in into the Apple store. I identify that the, our app identifies it's been used to make tentative appointments the Apple tablet and to cheat at golf. Students have used it to play ceiling darts. It's wait a second. What's hiding behind this pencil? Ah, oh, an iPad Air. Almost didn't see it back there. Oh, what's this? Hiding behind the iPad? Ah, the even thinner Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1. <laughs> Interesting. Not only are you thinner, your HD screen is killer for more robo beatdown action. And would you look at that? The Galaxy Tab even does multitasking. Two things on screen at once, versus up to one thing on screen at once. You know what? I'm going to take this Samsung Galaxy Tab. And I'm going to take this pencil. The thinner, higher resolution Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1. Um, all the ads you see here are uh, being served live from our server. And just an example of what the Air apps can do with it. Now you can see an example of uh, <coughs> loading apps, uh, loading uh, ads that shows you the location of the nearby store. Uh, what we click on and then say, hey, we have a store near you, just one floor down, maybe you should check it out. So I go there. <laughs> and when I do, it identifies, again, the Samsung S8, shows me all the relevant data. And here, it will show me the actual uh, galaxy end of the product. Opens when it sees you. It has the world's first infinity screen, which makes your world infinitely bigger. And a camera fast enough to catch just about anything. It has Bixby, an intelligent sidekick that gets to know you and understands the world around you. You can't run away from that. 
closer to home, so it feels more like home. And it takes you anywhere you can imagine. Which makes it infinitely amazing. with this uh, uh, quote from uh, uh, Tommy Hannan that says that AR might be the eighth mass market and it's amazing because it's a completely new thing uh, uh, with, new with new devices and it changes how we do so many things uh, and it's going to be very exciting times to see it all happen uh, and uh, we are really, really looking forward to it so uh, that was it. Uh, thank you very much all for uh, having me today. Uh, so, anyone have any questions? Can you drive the uh, offline uh, ads? Only for this is an excellent question. Actually, we do. We allow the advertiser to decide what is an acceptable time period for offline. And if they do select it, we, because we do free caching of all the ads, we do it. And then we save all the events for to send them later. So they also get a report. And when you go to the subway, we you still see ads. Any other questions? Ben, maybe tell a little bit about the technology that uh, you okay. yeah. no, no problem. Uh, so, uh, basically, we provide developers. Uh, the technology has three main parts. Basically, we provide developers with an SDK. Uh, uh, even a drag and drop integration if you use Unity or Unreal, which is the most common 3D development environment today. Uh, uh, you define your placement inventory and you are ready to go. Uh, both for internal campaign, for your own uh, cross sale, uh, traffic exchange, even content management. Maybe you want to do a holiday sale, don't worry, we got you covered uh, just for the serving fee. And if you want to monetize, uh, we can connect uh, uh, developers using our public marketplace uh, both uh, directly to the top advertisers and uh, agencies on the one hand, and on the other uh, to all the top uh, major uh, ad exchanges like AppNexus and Rubicon and uh, we've been talking with William Double Click and it's really exciting times uh, and the technology will allow you to maximize the profit on your uh, uh, placement inventory basically on the one hand while providing advertising experiences that are fun to the user we are very excited about the opportunity for the first time to get a win-win-win situation publishers, game developers can monetize as much as they want and really uh, advertise as much as they want because there is a lot of space uh, uh, advertiser get the top user, uh, the top advertising experience they want to achieve, but they would not develop uh, 3D games. And end user get uninterrupted uh, uh, games, which is, at least for me as a gamer, I, I would love that. And this is why we started this whole thing, basically. And that's it. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I'm here. Andre will finish his uh, demo. Thank you, and uh, sorry about that. We are working with the latest technology, but technology failed us today, so here we go. Um, now, I was talking about the cancer drug networks, and this is the application that they developed before they, they came to us. So this is how one of these drug networks looks like. And I'm just going to put this here. And basically, it gives you the ability to manipulate it. Uh, you can kind of zoom in, you can touch on specific um, kind of parts, and it gives you more information about that. Um, and then this also allows you to collaborate with others. So when someone else puts the whole lens on, they actually see this experience as well. Now, one of the main challenges that we had in, in this application is to be able to select very specific nodes. As you can see in this video, it's only when your cursor actually touched that node that that would see as a hit target. So, you know, if you have something like this, trying to select specific nodes or specific cells in that, it's almost impossible to be able to do it with your cursor. 
So this is one of the things that we've worked on, and I'm going to go back to my slides now. And we looked at things like this, and you know, especially in virtual reality, augmented reality, how do you select when you have something like this in front of you? How do you make it easy for the user to understand that, hey, if I move my cursor around, I can select the nodes that I want to, I can interact with them, and it's all just smooth, um, and it works. And um, Tyler, that's sitting right there, <laughs> he was an engineer uh, on this project as well, he came up with the idea, why don't we use Voronoi selection in 3D? So, for some of you that haven't heard about Voronoi, Voronoi is a very known method for tessellation in like 3D engines and 3D graphics and so on. So, we looked at that and said, okay, well, how can we use this in 3D for selection? So what Voronoi does, if you can look at this graph here, it just takes 2D points of all of these coordinates and then it creates hit targets around them so that it makes it easier for you to select. So if you go anywhere near in this area, it will select this point here. If you go in this area, it selects this point and so on. So there is a, there is a lot of maths behind it. Uh, but let me just show you a very simple example on the web now, let's say you have this graph here and you want to select these specific countries that, that you see. The only way to select it is if you go with the cursor right above it. So then it selects that country. But when you want to go into this area down here and you want to select these, it's really, really hard. Like you have to be very precise to go from one place to another, which is something that you do in 3D as well. Now, this has Voronoi selection into it. So now, you see when I hover kind of in that area because it created those hit targets around, it just makes it super easy for me to select these points um, and it's all very, very intuitive. I don't have to go anywhere near it and then I've already selected the point and I can get information about that. So that's a very brief explanation of Voronoi, but then we've taken that to 3D. So how, how can you do that? Well, there are six steps for you to select a certain object. So what you do is you send the sphere cast in the center of the screen and you try and grab all the objects that are in front of you that you want to select, of course. You turn all of these 3D objects into 2D screen coordinates, just like any other you know, uh, 3D application, everything is presented on a screen at the end of the day. So you do have 2D coordinates for everything in your scene. So that, all of those spheres there, no matter how depth you are, how far away from you they are, it all turns into these points. And then this is the Voronoi grid that comes on top of it. So in all of these areas, it basically tries to create the same distance between these two points and these two points. As you can see, it's always the line It's kind of in the middle of all of these points. So it's trying to be as accurate as possible so that it gives you kind of good hit targets around it. And then once you have all of this grid, now you have hit targets. So in our scenario, because we were using um, HoloLens, the middle of the screen is where your gaze is. So that's what you care about in terms of selection. So we just took this point in the middle of the screen and said, okay, what are the nearest surfaces around you? So you have all these four surfaces here, and obviously it sits in number three. It's all, it's obviously it's a lot of math behind it to be able to do that. And then once you've selected this area, you say, okay, I want the point in here that was represented in this area. So you select that sphere. And this happens every time you move your head around. It's very, very quick. It doesn't use any physics. It's all maps behind it, and it's extremely fast. If you have 10,000, 1,000 nodes, it will just swift through it and select the, the one that is good for you. So, let's do some demo time. I have this whole project is open source, um, and it's on GitHub. Uh, it's all written in Unity and C Sharp, and it's gonna go uh, on the GitHub repo, it's gonna explain exactly like how it works, uh, what's behind it, and this is just an example of the application running. You can see like you have like some 3D spheres, and as you move around, you will see them being selected. Even though I'm not nowhere near them, it kind of selects that because it's a hit target. And it makes it very, very easy. And then you can manipulate, move them around, and it's just very, very intuitive. Um, in terms of Unity, I have it here. I actually downloaded it into Moore's machine. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, but it's a very simple scene. Once you run, um, I created a generator that just generates 30 spheres. You can generate more if you want to. And as soon as I move around, oh, I'm gonna have to put this down. You can 
can see that basically when I start moving, I, I start selecting like the spheres that I want to. And now if you just click and then move, you can drag them and move them around. Now you notice once I move, I started selecting other ones because that moves out of the hit target. So now I can just basically stand still and manipulate all the nodes around the way. I will eventually select all of them, but because of their hit targets, it just become bigger and bigger. And then you just go through them like that. Now, in terms of in terms of the code, um, everything is very very easy to use. Um, so you have a few scripts in C sharp. Voronoi selection is the main one. You just have to add this script anywhere in your scene, and then you just create a, a specific layer for the objects that you want to select. Once you do that, um, we do the sphere cast as I explained before. We look at all of those objects in that area. Then we generate the uh, QE coordinates for each of those objects, that's basically kind of the screen coordinates of those. And then we add the nodes, we create the Voronoi selection, and then we look and see which one is in the middle of the screen, and then we do this thing called on focus enter. That's basically how we select the object, we turn blue at that point. When an object goes out of the way, we just say on focus exit, and that's it. You're not in focus anymore. So this is, uh, like I mentioned, completely open sourced. Uh, you can have a look at it at any time, uh, and feel free to post any pull requests um, if you want to. And just as a going back to the Voronoi selection, like this is now being used by uh, Well Cornell in all of their applications. It's not resource intensive. It's very very fast. It works with a lot of nodes. Work great on whole ends, but this can work on any 3D application if you think about it. You can use mouse. You can use uh, even controllers in 3D and Vive and so on, like it's not limited to HoloLens. This can be reused on anything else. It's all maths basically behind it. Uh, the open source code is there. I'm going to send a slide later on so you can have all of these links in there. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Any Actually, uh, two um, lectures about UX, right? And, and if you think about it, uh, what does it mean? It means not stuff like that exactly. How do you do stuff in 3D? Uh, so, Andre, thank you very much for showing for sharing the code. And our next speaker is Igal from Snapping. Hello everyone, um, my name is Gal, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Snappy. And today I created uh, a different presentation than I used to. Uh, today I'll try to cover uh, our application from a different angle, from a strategic product uh, angle. And to explain a little bit what are we doing with AR and why, according to what I think, is super critical to our business. So let's start. So, uh, before I start talking about the product and what we do, I have to say that um, traveling a lot in the world, going to a lot of augmented reality conferences, and the most asked question is by 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 developers is should I do this experience in, in AR? Yes or no? And I have to say this is a, a pretty good question because at the end of the day, right now everybody hears about AR. Everyone everyone wants to take a part in AR because hey, you can raise a lot of capital, you can be very successful. At the end of the day, I, I would say that you should think about two main things if you want to go into AR. The first thing, is AR really necessary? Will AR, will AR enhance the experience of the users? And number two, if you decide that the answer is yes, uh, to which extent? Are we going to open the camera for two, three hours in a row? Are we going to use other elements and then only for the exact moment we need to use AR, we'll use AR. 
Uh, there are plenty. There are plenty of, of examples all over the place how people are using AR. You can see it listed over there. If I start from navigation, like DeepAR doing, they just release an app uh, that pretty much lets you navigate in AR. Or commerce, where probably all of you have heard of on, on IKEA, they've released an app in which you can pretty much put a sofa inside your house and check the measurements and check the colors even before you buy it. So there, there are a lot of very practical things that we can do with AR. And this is what I would like to cover today. So, Let's start. Let's start and talk about the B2C communication evolution. Uh, I'm specifically talking about B2C, not B2B. There's a, uh, there's a big intention behind it. B2B is totally different. What we're doing is only B2C. So, you know, ever since uh, mankind have started, like from the prehistoric man, people have communicated. Uh, like they painted, they thought like in booga booga booga, but like, they, they delivered messages, they, they told stories, they communicated. And then, they a little bit evolved, they connected two uh, yogurt cups with a cord. And then they can deliver messages to a much greater distance. 10 meters, 20 meters. Then, we even evolved into the telephone, which was a big revolution. Now I can deliver messages even for thousands of miles. I can call from Israel to the United States. It wasn't that simple, but it got there at the end. The problem that, uh, that happened with this kind of phones, uh, the problem that I found, was that at the end, every household had one or maximum two phones. So for me, when I was, uh, was, uh, when I was growing, uh, when I was a child, uh, I used to call my friends, and you know, in Israel, we used to call them like, by the last names. So I have a good friend, his name is uh, Yoav Shechter, and every time, every time I called his house, I said, hey, may I speak to Shechter? And his mother answered and said, what do you mean? All of us are shechters. Who are you looking for? And then I said, sorry, Tama, I'm looking for your love. The idea was pretty simple. You could not get someone directly. Nobody had an ID like we used to have right now. Then it got a little bit better. We, we did the same experience, but a little bit remotely. And then, I would argue that this is one of the biggest inventions of all. I'm talking about, by the way, the feature phone or the smartphone, because this is the first time that every human being got a personal number, just like ID we have today, and I can text someone directly, I can send him whatever I want. I can be like rude, I can send him in the middle of the night, I don't care. His mother would never pick it up. And then it got a little bit better, uh, we had the smartphones, and then this is where we got the communication features uh, that we know, we know of today, like WhatsApp, and we got group chats, and we got something much more engaging. Now, I'm arguing that the next piece of the puzzle is the methodology. And why? If you will seriously think about the psychology behind the methodology, you will understand that the methodology is a storytelling tool. It's a tool that helps you which helps you to uh, uh, deliver emotions, which helps you to sell you your thing, your story, whatever. And if you think about communications, even online and offline, this is what we're doing. We're telling a story. If I, if I tell my spouse how I was in work today, so I'm putting my, my own uh, to say inside. So at the end of the day, I'm telling a story. Even if I think that this is an objective story, I'm telling a story. This is why these two industries, industries have has to go together because the mental health is about telling a story and communication is about telling a story. This is why we chose to connect these two dots. This is why we chose to develop an augmented reality communication platform. We bring together uh, a traditional communication features like, uh, you know, calls, uh, stickers, messages, alongside with a unique layer of augmented reality, which deeply integrated within the communication features. Now, this entire technology is based on a family of 3D animated characters. By the way, you will see a live demo today, so everything I'm talking about, you will see it live. And, and this is what we're doing. So let me, start, let me start analyzing our product in front of you in real time, so you guys will understand how these two industries can live together. I, I'm not going to show you the entire project. We have a very, very, very ambitious project, very, very big. Uh, it, it involves online and offline, pretty much everything. I will go in details only about things that I think that are different. Because 
A lot of people are mistaken in thinking that we are just another WhatsApp. But only when they actually start using the product and start looking deep down to the, to the features, they understand what we, all, what we are all about. So let's start, let's start with 3D characters. We have invented the family of 3D animated characters. Each one is moving, each one is with its own unique personality. Uh, it's, it's fully animated, like one, between one to two seconds each. And every character is, has its own thing. Like Snappy is a blueberry, he's happy, all the time he's smiling, like he's naive. Is the, is the good guy on the block. Then we have Lola, for, for example. So, so she is a little bit more like a bitch. Uh, she, she doesn't give a fuck about things. She's a little bit arrogant. And we have Scott the cat. So we have pretty much all the characters. I will show you in a second. Uh, but we said that it's not enough because what we really have invented, we've invented a new language. And every, every sticker or every character, at the end of the day, it's not just one word, it's a full sentence. Now people have argued that, hey, it's a problem for us because I'm sending a sticker, um, I want to say one thing, but the recipient gets it all wrong. He thinks about something completely else. This is why we needed to listen to the feedback that came from the users and we invented the special characters. Characters with audio and with text. So if you feel that the receiver, the recipient, will not get what you want to send him, you can add text and audio. Uh, then, we've invented a prediction menu. A prediction menu is pretty much an artificial intelligence algorithm that every time someone sends you a character, you can just click it and you get suggestions based on your own personality. Now, every person will get different suggestions, they will vary and change over time, so they will adapt according to your personality and according to how you used to work. So at the end of the day, after, after a while of usage, you can respond just like that with the cor right, correct answer you want to send. And this is why we've done it. Then we go into live typing. Live typing is a little bit different. Uh, long story short, you just can type someone a message and in real time the other person can see what you're typing. And the reason we, we've done it, again, if we're talking about strategic point of view, is if you think about communication or about storytelling, just like mental reality. So how many times someone started to, to tell you something, a story, and just after two seconds, you pretty much understood what you want to say. Like, you really understand what the guy wants to say. And then you want to tell him, no, 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 please stop, I, I fully understand. But the guy is in the zone, keep on, keep on going, going, going. This is how we invented live typing. So if someone is typing you something and you really understand what, what he says, you can stop answering. And what, by the time you press the send button, you can immediately respond to what he wants to say. So that the conversation, instead of going like, it goes like boom, 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 boom. And you deliver the same amount of messages, you convey the same amount of messages, but you do it much faster and in a much interesting way. Then we have the personal profile. It's some kind of a mini Facebook inside our application. You can uh, upload up to five images, people can comment them, people can like them. Again, I'll show you that in a second. Now we get into the interesting part. Now we get into the augmented reality. Um, we have created four different augmented reality editors. Each one with its own unique thing. You, you will use each one of them in different circumstances. So let's start one by one. Let's start with AR Editor. What is an AR Editor? AR Editor is a state-of-the-art tool based on AR kits and AR core. Probably most of you already know that, uh, know these technologies. And what it does is it gives you the opportunity to create a very complicated, enhancing augmented reality scenes. You can put uh, you can place a snappy uh, of your choice in the middle of the room. You can add in uh, videos, you can add images, you can add the text, and at the end of the day, you can convey a message in a much more appealing way. Think about it this way. If I want to say to my wife, I don't know, I love you. I can, I can text her, the text, I love you. I can voice message her, hey, I love you so much, which probably will be more engaging. I can send her a sticker doing something like which will probably be even more engaging. And this is the next level. This is where I really get Steven Spielberg style instead of something she cannot stay, uh, uh, she cannot, she has to respond. She cannot stay indifferent or something like that. Then we continue with this approach. We created the geo air editor, like location based air editor. And the reason is that, just like in life, just like with people, just like with communications, we have different needs. For example, how many times you guys have went, it's very popular here in Israel, the beach? 
you went to the beach with your, with your friends, without your spouse, and you were playing, you, you, you've done your thing, and during, the, during this time, you started to feel like, oh, I wish my spouse was here. So what, what, what you can do, you can call her, or you can do something else. You can leave a romantic note at the beach, and next time, uh, she will get a push notification, and next time she'll be in the area, she will go there, she will open it, and she can connect the content of the message with the atmosphere of the location. So, of course, I will not do something, I will, I will not give her a romantic, uh, a romantic message, I will not give her a romantic message inside the garbage. It makes no sense, where is the connection? But I can go very, very creative with this one. It's totally new, we released it like a week ago to the market. Uh, we're gonna make a lot of noise on, on that, on CS conference within four weeks. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit later. So we have two more editors, we have video editor and image editor. The idea of both of them is pretty simple. You can either record a video or capture a, a, a photo, and then you can use our entire 3D animated characters in order to enhance it. For example, uh, just someone just, I don't know, took a picture of me, and I'm, I'm sad. And I want to make it even more interesting, so I can put a sad snappy on top of it, create a, add a little bit of sound, and I can create a new type of a message. I can create a video clip, short video clip of four seconds, that will be much more engaging and much more interesting. So, the idea here is that every one of them is a new message type. It's a new type of message that is sent directly to the chat so people can react, can respond, and you can just deliver emotions in a way just different than what we've done today, till today. So let me, let me connect my iPhone and let's start playing a little bit, okay? It's more interesting. Nico, if you're watching that right now, stop sending me, stop sending me too many messages. Is it? It's not on. Uh, it was on before. Yeah, it was. Go ahead. Okay, there you go. Welcome to Snappy. So, what is Snappy all about? Uh, let me try uh, and, and just show you everything I just explained, but like vivid. So, let me talk to the bot. Uh, here's a bot. As you can see, everything is animated, everything is moving, and everything is engaging. So, uh, the bot can send me something, I can just open the gallery of stickers. I have different stickers, for example, I have Scott the Cat, which the guy is super selfish. Look at, look at his, and on his expression. Even when the guy is dancing, he's so selfish, he's so sad, and it, it's just uh, a one type comes, one type cast of a person. And look at Snappy. Uh, Snap, uh, I got a response on the right side. This is me sending uh, stuff. On the left side, this is the bot. And what I send, I send like uh, like Scott, which is dancing, is supposed to be happy, and Snappy started laughing at me. So I can click Snappy. I can get predictions. I can say, uh, on the upper left side, I can say something like evil stuff, or I can say okay, or I can say like, oh interesting, I'm dancing, or I can say like, what the fuck, this guy is an idiot, or I can say, I can say, wow, it's hilarious. For example, I can say something, oh, it's funny, and then he's making fun of me. So, a long story short, there's a lot of different ways to express emotions here. And let's take it even uh, deeper, so I'm clicking something, and let's say, uh, Snappy is not happy with me, you can see it inside the circle, and I can beg for my life, but let's say begging for my life is not good enough, so I can long tap it, and then I can either add audio or, or text to it, saying something like, oh, please forgive me, please forgive me. 
And at the end of the day, you will get you will get this engaging animation plus the audio. Oh, please forgive me. Please forgive me. So it's another way again to express emotions. Now, a lot of people will add, will say, why do I need it? So I would argue that uh, it depends on your age and it depends on your experience that you're looking for. For example, a lot of people still don't understand Snapchat style. So a lot, a lot of grown-ups like we like like we are like. 25, 30 and top, do not understand why people need Snapchat. Hey, we have WhatsApp, why do we need something else? That is pretty simple. Uh, when, we get, when we get a little bit older, uh, and we lose like the spark in our eyes, we don't care anymore. First of all, we don't have time to play around and, 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 to, and to do cool stuff. And second of all, we don't care. But when you're younger, when you're 10, 15, 20, 25, you really need that. And you use as many tools as you can on Instagram, on Snapchat, you pretty much live it. So, let's continue. Oh, by the way, I didn't show you the live typing, just one second. So I can type something, do you see the black box? Oh, do it in English? Do you see the black box? The other user can see what I'm typing. So, look, he's gonna respond, and I can respond at the same time. I can make everything much, much, much quicker. Now let's go to the interesting part. The interesting part, Oh, we have the personal profiles I told you. I can put images here, I can like them, I can dislike them, I can comment them, and this is just me. I can go on every personal profile of anyone in the network, and I can respond, I can communicate. Now, this is where it really started to get interesting. This is the augmented reality editor menu. Here you can get, here you can get the four different tools that I just showed you. And the idea is pretty simple. You need to choose the right tool for the right time, for the right purpose. Now, for example, let's start simple. Uh, we can... Let's create something. Yeah, let's create something. Let's create an accountability message. So, loading your AS session, as you can see. And I'm putting... I'm placing Snappy here. Now, as you can see, I don't know if I can move. Is it long enough? So, snap, Snappy stays... Oh, sorry. Snappy stays, as you can see, I can go 360 on him, and I can start directing him. I can start telling him, hey, Snappy, be happy. So he can do cool stuff. And then I can tell him, clap your hands. And slowly, slowly, I'm creating some kind of a video. Uh, as you can see, he's like dancing, he's happy. And I can add also cool text. I can say, blah, 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 blue. And it's like Snappy is saying that. I can add either a title, and play with colors or anything. Let's choose blue. Uh, sorry, it's green. I can add photos and videos. Um, I don't know, selfies, maybe. Oh, yeah. My family. So, at the end of the day, what I'm doing here, I'm creating an AR scene, an AR message. And the most beautiful part of it is when I'm sending that, I'm not sending a video, I'm sending the augmented reality content. So, the, the receiver, when you get that, you pretty much open it whenever you use. You will open it, you will play Snappy, and you will get absolutely the same content on his own background. So it's just, we invented a new type of a message, a new type of, of telling a story. So this is one thing. Let's go and discuss a little bit the GIR message. So the GIR message is pretty much the same, the only difference is we have navigation. Let me just see uh, something that I've created. Let's click this one. So this one actually was taken pretty much here. It's like, I don't know, 10 meters from here. As, as you can see, it automatically went to the camera because I'm so super close. Let me start looking for Snappy. Where is Snappy? I don't know. Snappy, Snappy, where you are? Oh. So you see, this is Snappy. He's waiting for me. As you can understand, in most cases, I will not be 20 meters away from him. And I'll try to find a place to land him. And he will just jump from the sky. And I'll, I will have him here, inside the room. So the idea, as I told you guys, I can leave a message wherever I want, and the person will just need to navigate over that. Okay, let's go. Let's go and start exploring other stuff. So we have also the image editor and the video editor. Let's let's do something cool. I can capture myself, myself, and I can place any Snappy or Lola or, or Scott that I want, and I can. I can record a voice or use some kind of cool sound effect, like something like this. I can just say blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. 
So it just added emotions to the photo. It was a boring photo, now it's not a boring photo anymore, it's a cool photo. Let's finish it. Let's finish it. We have the same thing with, with the videos. So, like, cool thing. And by the way, a lot of people have asked me, is this a real augmented reality? I mean, you don't have a slam engine here, you don't have fluid reconstruction. Yes, guys, you're absolutely right. But as far as the, um, the simple user is concerned, every time you put some kind of a digital layer on top of real life, this is augmented reality. It doesn't matter how complicated it is, it doesn't matter how sophisticated it is, as long as you can uh, see something on top of the reality, this is augmented reality. For example, Snapchat masks for a lot of people is augmented reality. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So I wanted I wanted to describe a little bit the challenges that oh it's not there yet. So I wanted, to, actually this slide looks like an innocent slide, but I can go on and talk like two hours on this slide on all of the augmented reality challenges that we're facing on a daily basis and how do we solve them and what do we do about them. I think that this one does, doesn't deserve like a five minutes quick chat. So uh, what I'll do right now, wait a minute, if you guys have questions, we can go to questions. If you guys don't have questions, I can go a little bit and talk about it. So any questions from the audience? None? Yeah, sure. Can you add characters? Can you add characters? What do you mean like add characters? No, it's nothing. We do that all the time. We add in characters all the time. But not the client, only the publisher. Yeah, yeah, of course. These characters you've seen is fully HD uh, Disney style characters. So to produce them, it's, it's, it's a hard work. We cannot let anyone do that because the, the, the level of animation in this application is super high. This is why we're saving this hard work for us, not for the users. Anything else? Yeah, sure, I'm back. Uh, what the technology you used to... Uh, uh, Can you speak up a little bit? I cannot hear. What technology you used to localize the uh, image with the AR example? Was it the AR kit? Which one of them? The one which you looked at the floor? It yeah, it's AR kit. AR kit. Totally AR kit. <laughs> yeah, sure, over there. This is a dedicated messaging app? Like it's just standalone, right? Yeah. Okay, so I already have like Snapchat and WhatsApp and Instagram and Facebook Messenger and like everything else too. So can this technology, are you interested in bringing this to a different Messenger app? Or do I, will I need one more Messenger app now? You will need another app. Okay. We're developing our own environment because as, as I said guys, this uh, project is super ambitious. Well, I just showed you like 20% of the project. Later on, they're going to be games, so mental reality games based on the characters. They're going to be merchandise. They're going to be yeah, uh, product placement inside. So pretty much what we're developing, we're developing a world. We're developing a new Walt Disney. At the end, you're going to get, get cartoons. You're going to get full, uh, full uh, length uh, videos, like movies. So you're going to get pretty much everything. We, we've created like a brand, not just a product. So it's just impossible to do it that way. Yeah? What stage are you in as a company? What do you mean? Be more specific. Funding, employees, well, what's okay, the okay, 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 the company. Product. Sure. So we're 22 employees located here in Tel Aviv and Moscow. Uh, we've invested uh, almost um, four point something million dollars in the project uh, out of our own pockets, uh, no external, external funding. Uh, more than two million registered users uh, keep on scaling up very fast. Uh, we're going to have Till now, we pretty much operated in, in, in like secondary markets like Dubai, India, uh, Egypt, Russia. Right now, we're going for, for the home run. Uh, we're, going, we're going to do a major launch at CES five weeks from now with television, with PR, pretty much all over the place. We started to construct uh, strategic deals with Google and Huawei, Huawei, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Probably I pronounce Yeah, 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 I also thought I know how to pronounce it. And once you're going to talk to the Chinese people, they will say something like, oh, you never understand what they say. So, 
right now, pretty much, I, I would say that we've placed the project in a place it can really take off and to become something in the mainstream. It's just, uh, it just how well we're going to do it, PR-wise, marketing-wise. And I hope we have most of the solutions. We have a lot of uh, promising features coming up next. For example, just a short example, for, co for the conference at CES, what we've created, we created a special augmented reality city tour. It means that you pretty much wandering the streets of your city on a map, and then there's uh, uh, different snappies waiting for you in different places. Each and every snappy is, is a snappy that is taken from ordinary city life. So you have snappy the cop, you have snappy the burglar, you have the, the, the uh, you have the juggler, you have like the dancer, and you can record you can record this experience in full augmented reality wherever you are. Uh, so. This is why someone asked me about are we going to do it ourselves or are we going to give it to someone else. Our vision is, is so different that we cannot just give it to, to WhatsApp. They don't have this technology, they don't even go to after, the, they don't chase the same, the same user that we are chasing. WhatsApp are trying to adapt to users between the ages of 7 to 70. And it's impossible to give some kind of engaging experience for them. WhatsApp is a very good Kalachnikov. It will always work, it will always deliver, but it will never give you the engaging experience that you're really looking for. You're taking the experience out of the network effect, out of all your friends being there, this is why you enjoy it. Once, it, uh, I hope and I think it will go mainstream our application, you will see it will start with a younger audience, they will see they will not even understand what they did with WhatsApp or with Instagram or with other applications because they, don't, they lack the tools that are actually funny, cool, engaging. They don't have it, they didn't think about it this way. So it's another vision, just totally different vision of communication and having fun. Yeah, sure. Uh, how many years have you been operating and how much external funds have been invested in the company? I already said, no external funds. No, no, no. Nothing. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's hard to say it because the company has been operated, uh, started to operate uh, at the beginning of 2015. But at the beginning, what we've developed is uh, like a social aggregator. So you can take your Facebook account, your Twitter account and everything and plug it into one application with one account and control it all. And we pivoted from that to a plain message, I would say, like a year or something ago. And only six months ago, we actually did, we actually find our product market fit, and we focused and we keep on focusing more and more and more and more on augmented reality. The reason is super simple. What we really invented here, we have invented a new way to enhance emotion and deliver them, uh, express them and deliver them digitally. And by the way, not just digitally, even when I'm wearing a shirt of Snappy, or I have cups, or I have like notebooks, or I have cartoons. So this is what I'm saying, it's a much bigger thing than just a regular product. It's a series of products that starts with the first one, and hopefully soon with the right funding, we'll get to the size that we really want it to be. Everywhere, with everything that you do. So think about it this way, you wake up, 8 a.m., you're answering all of the messages people left you on Snappy, then uh, if you're young enough, you're wearing a Snappy t-shirt or something cool, go to school, uh, you play snappy games during the school because nobody cares for school and then you go back home, uh, you go to your hobby and then you watch a little bit of cartoons on snappy and then at the end of the day you go into the cinema and watching a snappy movie. Uh, I, would, I would go even further and say uh, if you take my vision at the end of the day you'll go to an amusement park based on snappy. So it's like a new old Disney based on other characters pretty much surrounding you 360. This is the biggest vision that we have.
everybody's with me? We're good? Okay. So, uh, my name is Matan. I'm uh, the co-founder and CEO of Astrolink. Uh, so, my, my goal with this uh, 15, 20, 40 minutes, we'll say, <laughs> is, uh, is to discuss about the real uh, practical pain that exists already in the world and how AR actually helps to solve it. So, we're working from a different angle that you probably usually see, like advertising, gaming, entertainment. We're actually tackling like something that came from the industry as a pain point and people actually discussed about using any kind of augmented layer to help them with this problem. So our goal is to help construction teams prevent construction errors in real time. So just a bit about the company. So we started about two years ago, uh, more or less, uh, out of the Zell Entrepreneurship Program at IDC. We're funded by GrowVC, Slow Moran's uh, VC. We're currently eight and growing. Uh, well, uh, our goal is to bridge the gap between the plans, the blueprints that you probably know, and uh, reality, what's also called the aspect, like the physical construction state, like what they physically do. So it's not just about a digital uh, layer, it's also about the physical uh, sphere. And uh, in, in regards to other experiences, we really have to understand what we're seeing. So we're not just placing a ball on a table, we're actually taking 3D plans that we have and project them on top of 3D reality. So everything has to be very accurate and very precise. So we call it professional AR because it's not just a use for entertainment, but more professional use for that. Uh, and the way that we do it is that we develop an augmented reality platform that helps them see what they should do, visualize all the work, uh, and by that we're helping them make uh, quality assurance faster, easier, and more accessible for the whole site. So the problem that we're discussing is construction errors, like this one, or like this one, and let's describe what we're seeing here. So this is an opening in the wall, like very similar to here, we're able to see that here they drilled in reinforced concrete, and what we're seeing in the picture is a 2 by 3 meter hole that they forgot to place in the rebars, in the irons before they pour the concrete uh, inside. And this kind of hole uh, is very costly. It costs $10,000 to drill this kind of hole in a week of work. And this is from an Israeli project and here in Tel Aviv, very close, we will not disclose the name. Uh, but this kind of mistake took them just five minutes to make to say, okay, in the plans, they thought they had the whole place for the uh, ACE event, like the recognition event, but they didn't. Uh, and because they didn't have any accessible data, like they have the plans, 2D plans, with their hands, and what they should have done before they put it is look at the plans, look at the wall, see, I have a hole in the plans, do I have a hole in the irons, in the rebars, before I put the concrete? And apparently, three people confirmed that there is a hole, but there was none. So these kind of errors happen every day and every hour in construction site. Okay, it's a plague, literally. So in the wall, we're talking for each project between seven and a half to twelve and a half percent of each construction project budget is money that they spend repairing construction errors that could have been prevented. So I'm not talking about a wall that the architect had placed somewhere. They built it and they say, ah, the design was wrong. We're talking about actual errors that could have been prevented. At the site, if we're, if we're talking about you know countries bigger than Israel, and I'm talking only about money from errors, in the US we're talking more than 100 billion dollars every year, in the UK 11 billion pounds, in Germany more than 10 billion euros every year spent fixing, repairing, changing errors that could have been prevented. And this is crazy. By the way, in Israel it's not 7.5 to 12.5, it's starting from 10 to 15. So, I'm not sure if it's <laughs> confusing everybody. Yeah. Who, pays, who pays on this? Who pays on this? You, when you buy an apartment. You know, Mechir La Mishtaken or whatever is going on. You just need to lower the amount of errors. It will make it a lot, of cheap, a lot cheaper. Okay, so let's see some videos, right? What's important for me to mention before I show the videos is that we're a technology company. So we're Currently, we're not using ARKit or AirCore or that kind of stuff. We're actually developing algorithms.
to understand the space of uh, uh, computer vision engineers in the, in the team, so we understand the reality, and by that we're placing things on top of reality. So what we're seeing here is a project in the UK from our customer site. And here the system located uh, the user's location, pose estimation, there's a lot of stuff going on, understand where it is in space and what it's actually looking at, and overlays the 3D model of that area in the right context. And you can see nothing is built around it. So still it still keeps it accuracy and then you're able to understand what you should build, how it should look, where it should be placed. For example, all the pipes should be located around here. You can understand if what you should install next would actually fit what you've done. And uh, as uh, also Omri discussed about like multiplayer AR, you call it, or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so when you have visibility, you're talking about communication. So think about two people discussing the plans or what they should build next or what's the next type of job. Think about the visibility they have together right now to discuss about it. That's a completely different game for them. Uh, they get all the information from here, so we, we do not use GPS or Wi-Fi or any kind of stuff, just the, the camera. And what we're saying now is that if you look from one side, like if you peek from one side of the wall that should be built, you can see it's still accurate, and then if you peek from the other side, so it's, the wall is the same as there. So this is like one kind of example that gives them visibility. <coughs> that's, that's a pre-built model, right? That's a 3D model. No, it's a pre-built model. Which, the one on the... The one you see is that it's a 3D model, it's pre-built. But no, it's a code, it's a lot more the, the 3D model is pre-built, right? Is the one that, that the architect built? Yes, the architect's pre-built one. You don't, uh, yeah. you don't create it in real time. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. color yeah. one, yeah. yes. We receive it from the architect or from different advisors to the architect. Okay. Complex. That's it. You know, they don't in real time have the plans when they build. If you break it, it's all the decks. Are the software, are the 3D software? Excuse me? Is it Yes. Well, yes, we're in, in a very strong partnership with Autodesk. For those of you who don't know, the company is the creator of AutoCAD and other design tools for construction and real estate. We're that deeply uh, integrated with them. Our office is actually located inside, inside of their offices here in uh, Israel, in Tel Aviv. So working very closely, a very strong partner for us. Are the measurements reliable? Are you able to actually make quantitative measurements? Yeah. It's possible. There is, there is some uh, error margin, we're working to lower it down, but uh, it's, uh, it's for an area of up to 4 square meters, more or less, it's accurate. Uh, is it used or uh, you So if you're asking about any customers, yeah, we're working with the third largest construction company in Europe, and it's also the sixth largest construction company in the world, it's called Buig Construction, so they are our customers. Uh, we started looking, working with customers not that long ago. It's actually a quite funny story. So they were looking for kind of solutions. We, we pitched them what we're doing. Say, okay, sounds interesting. We were supposed to have a pilot about a month ago, something like that. But we went in August just to show them what we're working on. And after we showed them different features and, and we showed them real stuff, said, you must leave your system. If you don't leave a system now, don't ever come back. <laughs> so you know, so we made the sale, and for us it was actually a very good surprise. Most of the surprises in startups, as some you know, are not good surprises. And how many defects, for example, the software needs to find in their project? So uh, with the project, they were able to decrease the time for each defect they found by about fifty percent. So this is one. I'll show you another. It's uh, oh, that's my. So for the user, it's all about usability. It's all about making it easy to use. So this is like uh, the flow. We choose the construction project is working out. This is also from uh, London, from uh, Chelsea area. You see all the 3D model. It got all the right information. For example, if it's working at the third floor, to go into VR and to have it accurately registered on top of reality, all you have to say is, I'm about here. Want to start with this area? 
In this experience, we detect the context in the scene and overlay it immediately on top of reality. And this overlay happens in real time, no cloud, backend, or whatever, and no GPS, and no other kind of data, just by using our algorithms. And in this case, we'd like to understand what was built underneath the lower ceiling. So in this uh, context, we'd like to get more information about what's going on and to understand what uh, information about today's event. <coughs> in this case, we trace a pipe installation to another site. So it wants to get visibility for what was done before. So it's also like a history editing tool for them in this, in this industry. It's interactive, you can play with the model. Matan, do you use a 3D uh, sensor? Or? Yes, currently we use also a 3D sensor. We're actually working to remove it. It's part of our... It's difficult, but it's possible. Yeah. So this has to come in, in at a time where you actually have some geometry around, because if you don't have anything, then you don't have anything to relate to, right? Uh, that's right, but... The way that it works, and that's what we also have a patent on, is that we do it very differently to HoloLens, for example, if any of like from the engineering side, we do not need a reconstruction or anything of the like. We use a very, very small amount of features that we take from reality uh, to make this happen. You mentioned the, the use of the iron bars before you pour the concrete. That, that's another how use you, case. How you detect the, 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 the complete uh, structure from the bars. If I give you all my secrets, you know, what would I have? Do you have additional hardware that can be connected to this application? Or is it just, just the phone and the application? So, the currently, yes, we do have an additional depth sensor that helps us make some measurements, but we're working uh, to remove it, so we wouldn't use it, we'll work from an angular camera. Yeah, but I, do you think that'll ever be possible, really, to use it? I know it's, uh, for us I know it's possible. It will take some time. It's a combination both of classical algorithms, if you'd like to go into the space, and new uh, approaches like learning approaches, uh, machine or deep learning. This combination enables you to do to get to better precision. Right? Let's, let's put it like that. So it's not just to Okay? And also, you know, you can look at ARKID. You know, that's stuff crazy. Working from every iPhone from the last three years, and the measurements are quite good. They're not the best, they're quite good. So imagine what's going to happen in a year or two years in everyone's pockets. It's going to be amazing. But I guess they shouldn't sell you about AR because you're here in an AR meetup. So. So what it enables for the people on site, how we're actually helping, what's the pain they're having. So in this concept they have real-time visualization. So imagine you need to build a car or build a home. It's the same, it can help you understand what you should build before you go into the job, how it should look, and uh, how it should all come together. Uh, it helps them have better decision-making process. You also have the most updated information. It's not only about having the information, but actually democratizing the usage of the 3D models called BIM in the industry. Because uh, if you today do not know how to read construction plans, would you be able to build anything? Probably not. But if you use AR, then you don't need to know anything about plans. You can just understand what you should do and do it. It's better if you have professional knowledge, but still, it makes it a lot easier. And a big problem they have is that they are not professional enough. I know it might sound funny, especially in Israel, but the people in this industry are not that professional. When you think about it, uh, there's many engineers also in this industry, but the, the common workers do not have the, any education that's relevant for doing that. So there's a lot of problems that because of the visibility and understanding of communication in the team are uh, caused at the site. So the main challenge here, uh, or one of the main challenges, because it's a very challenging industry, is the usability and UX. So the construction industry itself is very different than all of us. It's super traditional. Like these people, uh, we know what we're doing, we've done it for the past 20 years, we don't care, we're the best, we know everything. Every one of them is the same, every one of them is the best, everyone knows how to do his work, you know, like no one else. 
and they're not tech savvy, so it's not like you're failing to say, yeah, download the app, try it out, see how it works. If this doesn't work, you have five minutes and you're out. So it's very important for us to be, the usability is the most important. Uh, but the challenge is, is that the working environment is very challenging. A construction site is chaos. So there is 10 different plans for each kind of wall. There is several hands working on the same area. It's crazy. This means also a lot of complexity for the algorithms, as you and uh, also you mentioned. Uh, but the way that we solve it, that we don't just use stuff like AR kit, for example, to track the user movement or posture. We're actually making uh, the whole envelope around the user super easy, detecting his location accurately, the registration, making sure that the drifts from either uh, algorithm are not something that's really me messing up with their visibility. Uh, for example, a competitor, for example, we might have from a company that hosts us right now, is the Microsoft HoloLens. <laughs> so Microsoft will <coughs> great product, the whole lens, which sits on your head, it's a wearable, and you might say, ah, you know, if you have it in your eyes, it's easy to construct, yeah. to build stuff. But actually the problem with wearables, and especially with HoloLens, it's that it's not immersive. So there is a limited amount of polygons you can fit on the screen, and it's not, for construction it's just not relevant because there's a problem with safety, it's not working with hard heads, and more than that, when once you get a drift, so once the reality is not exactly on top of what's the digital form, is not on top of reality, and you have something blocking your eyes, you can't go with it uh, forward, it's really, really messing with your brain. Uh, so another aspect to that is that tablets are the most commonly used platform in construction. There are no, no many platforms, there's only one platform, it's tablets uh, and cell phones. <laughs> Uh, and it's, again, a very traditional market making any this kind of thing like a spacesuit for them. They're like, whoa, what's going on here? No. And for us, we approach them and say, you know a tablet already, you know how to use it, so there is no training needed. You just say where you are, where you want to start your experience, ready to go. And that's where they really like what we're doing. Because it, there, there is no training needed, it's very easy to go into it, very easy to understand. Questions? Up until now? Okay, that's it. Questions? No questions? Okay, so that's our shout out. We weren't mentioned before. If you're an iOS engineer or computer vision engineer or just someone who has ideas and want to discuss, hit me up and let's talk. Thanks. Special because it's kind of uh, only started it a few months ago and it's kind of growing quite organically. And I think it's very interesting to see uh, where he started and uh, where he took it. Uh, so, tell me of your time and yeah, do some of the demos. It's a fun project. So, I'll give the microphone to time. So, hey everyone, um, my name is Chaim, and I will start by saying thank you all for being here. Um, it's a pleasure for me to share with you what I've been doing in the last few months. And uh, today I will present you an application um, I've worked on in my free time. Um, it's called Vixio AR Movie Maker. And the goal of the application is to let you easily create um, movies with virtual characters by using augmented reality. And so, in this presentation, I will um, talk about the main features of the app, and we will see some videos and uh, also a live demo at the end. And I hope it will go well and that you will enjoy. So, first, before I introduce the app, um, I want to talk about how do we create content? And basically, how can you create content and um, create a movie with a virtual character without using augmented reality? Uh, so it's um, 
basically simple. You can uh, use Blender and After Effects. I will show you this quick movie. So th this was created by using uh, original uh, footage without the character and then using uh, After Effects to add the virtual character. And uh, in post-editing, you are placing basically markers in the video. So you can then place the character and create the illusion that the character was there in the first place. And well, what's cool about it is that you can uh, learn how to do that. And in fact, there is a YouTube tutorial that teaches you how to do that. And it, here is a screenshot I took from the YouTube tutorial. And I want you to notice two things about uh, this screenshot. And the first thing is that uh, the UI is complicated, right? Uh, like we have a lot of buttons, we have a state machine, we have dead things, I'm not sure what they, what they do. And also the second thing is that in order to create a 15 second video, I have to go over a 40 minutes long uh, tutorial. So um, we see that the process uh, needed in order to create a cool clip that we saw is pretty hard for most users and especially for kids. And so it's not something you can easily do. And now is a good time to introduce my application. Uh, so here's a quick promo video of uh, uh, the main features of the app. So let's see it. set of characters and animation that you can choose to use. And of course it's not as powerful as Blender or uh, as After Effects, sorry. And it's not for Hollywood or movie makers, but it's actually perfect for uh, you, me or any kid that wants to create a cool or funny movie. So this is uh, another video of uh, cool characters that I added uh, to the app. As you can see, you can actually uh, uh, control it by using a joystick and the uh, application is uh, focusing on uh, social media sharing so you can record the video of up to 20 seconds you can uh, play animation, you can fly and when the video ends, or when you end the video by yourself you can then share the video that you created with your friends and another cool thing is that all of the content of the app is uh, stored in the cloud, so you can download additional characters and animation without the need to update the application. And so, uh, until now, I received a lot of positive feedback from users. Uh, they, really like, uh, the, uh, they really like the fact that they have the ability to uh, create content without uh, any skills needed. And um, the community is growing. I got requests to add the new characters. And uh, about what I want to do in the future. So uh, I'm, uh, I want to start working with a celebrity. So basically, I want to let a celebrity. Um, I want to let them add. I will do the work for them, but I want to add 3D avatar of celebrities so fans can. Um, basically uh, do videos with them and uh, take pictures with them and uh, I think that it could be pretty cool and uh, another thing that I uh, thinking about adding to the application is uh, facial uh, animation like think about being able to control the expression of the characters that you are placing in the app and it's something that you won't have to uh, walk out in order to do it because the iPhone X gives you the ability to 
uh, to analyze your expression and I can then uh, animate the characters and another thing that I'm thinking about uh, doing is uh, giving the ability uh, letting the characters interact with one with another like uh, uh, if you are controlling your character and you punch another virtual character in the app uh, this character will respond and basically you can create uh, complex scenarios and also um, like simple stuff like uh, being able to trim the video, add filters, uh, add text and some uh, other basic things and so now we'll see a live uh, demo start by you uh, scanning the environment okay and now uh, you have a selection of characters that you can use let's uh, use some of the app and you can download additional characters like I said let's use uh, an already downloaded character and now we can easily uh, scale the character or move it around you can use the joystick <coughs> there are some additional features but I won't go uh, too much into details ok, let's add another one And because it's Christmas soon, and I got requests for it, we'll add also Santa Claus. Okay, um, so now uh, there is another cool feature that you can actually use. Uh, the scanning is not <coughs> really accurate, but it's okay. Um, it's a sort of a timeline feature where you can choose uh, pre programmed animations. And actually, you, uh, every character can do uh, something else, but I will choose the same animation for everyone. Uh, let me just find it. Right. I will do the same for everyone. One second. It's here. And this one too. So now our, uh, I preloaded the animation on the characters um, and we will add some music and when the time is right I will start by animating the characters. Yeah, right, so it's a nice, uh, it's a very 
very good question. Actually, I'm uh, uh, trying to get an iPhone X, you know, iPhone uh, uh, 10, yeah. <laughs> in order to be able to control the facial expression of the characters. And then I will add an option to uh, basically let you speak uh, the voice of your characters. Like if you are controlling a, um, a little dragon, you can uh, voice animate it. It's a feature I'm working on. I will work on. Yes. Um, you don't think that uh, as long as, as you add uh, more and more features, you want it to be a complex, like uh, working with uh, a, a complex uh, program like the one you showed? Uh, yeah, it, the After Effect? Yeah, uh, good question also. And um, actually, I always try to. Uh, um, put the bar very low for the usability, so even kids can use the application. A lot of users are kids, like 7, 10 years old. And um, I actually did a lot of uh, improvement to the, UI, to the UI and UX in order to uh, make it as simple as possible. Like, you don't need to, uh, you, you don't even need to read anything, right? And I think that I will try to keep it that way. Uh, it's a good question because if it's uh, becoming too much hard, then there is no no reason to do. It. Yes. This is really a side question. I noticed in the last demo you had very strong shadows. There was a light bottle that didn't seem to match the ambient light. Is that deliberate, or are you not able to deal with the light from the scene? Uh, ah, okay. So uh, I get uh, light estimation from ARKit, but the shadow. Uh, is not uh, the, the the shadow is not depending on the light basically uh, the sh the shadow is uh, pre uh, preset like I put uh, light in the scene and the shadow will always be in that direction and uh, it doesn't depend on the light in the in the real world but um, if you for example turn off the lights then you will see that the uh, all the application and all the characters are uh, basically darker. Like there is some light estimation and some uh, response to the light, but not uh, with shadows. Yes? What's your business model? Um, for now, I don't have any business. Like, I do it on my free time. But uh, I think that if I have uh, many users, I can start by, for example, uh, selling characters or selling animations. Uh, So thank you. Uh, so thank you for time. I think uh, if you uh, keep following this guy, you'll see more stuff coming up. And thank you all for coming. We have a community announcement. Uh, Johnny? Some, uh, Johnny? Johnny? Oh, yeah. I think he's about enough. Here's yeah, Johnny. Yeah. So thank you. No, thank you guys. Uh, I had a lot of fun here, uh, although I was late. Uh, I just wanted a uh, quick, uh, on the 17th of uh, December, we're hosting a very fun event with AR in the theater. Basically, uh, it's, uh, we call it State of AR VR 2017. We do something like that every year, uh, and basically we'll talk a bit about what's happening, we'll have VCs there, we'll have a special show of AR in the theater, a taste of the Gulliver uh, show that they're showing now, and we'll have some pretty interesting people and demos. I can't share it all, but we'd love to see you all there. Thank you very much. And it's free. And it's free. <laughs> uh, we should have better food than beers and pizza. Hopefully, we won't fall back to that. <laughs> thank you, Johnny, and thank you all for coming. Uh, we appreciate it.